All right, delicious little batch of food. Your time has come. All right, Kuta, let's do this. Nope, 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 you're not going away. There we go. All right, and he has been able to provide another bunny to his little family group, which is really wonderful. And hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Jaleep tribe. We are here on the Middle Island watching as Generation 3 continues to be born and spread throughout the island. And thankfully, so thankfully, we have been able to bring up a lot more food. We have been able to thwart several of the predators and I feel like everybody here has started to gain a lot more comfort in how they share the nest together how they're able to spread throughout the island and how they can start exploring all of the unexplored sections so I do need to get more um, more scouts up on our tree trunks it's a little bit concerning to see so much shadowy area we might have some predators sneaking out from there pretty soon but last time we had a flurry of breeding and a flurry of interesting nest sharing and fighting going on with many of our family groups. A lot of the family groups, like the wonderful Salima and Rira, or excuse me, not Rira, that would actually be, oh my goodness, Rira, when did you get Big Body? I just noticed that somehow she managed to mutate Big Body. Wow, that's very interesting. Uh, I actually think that, I can't remember if Ana Ala is her mother or Samela is her mother. I think Ana Ala is her mother. But on the Ala here, and, and that's why, because she had Big Body as her recessive, and her mate is Rogue here, so that is where that came from. <laughs> But anyway, you guys, we learned last time that one of the practices of the Jalip tribe is actually called nest sharing. And that's what we've kind of made up for part of their story because we have so many females and so few nests. And so almost all of the females have another female who's kind of their nest sister that they share the nest with. And all of the family groups get along very, very well when it comes to nest sharing until we get down to this group down here, where Asimi believes that her children are just the best that could possibly be born on the entire island and she is very upset to have to share with Miri and Miri has shown up to try to offer what genetics and ex expertise she can to the tribe and as a result of their fighting I feel like we haven't had as many children as we could so hopefully we'll be able to change that especially now that their mate there he is. Naroku is on his way back. Naroku was sick and injured, and I actually noticed that his illness, it seems like eating the fruit, set back the clock on all of the damage that he had taken. So he is no longer going to die as soon as we were worried he was. And he is working his way back over to his females, where hopefully he can come and meet. Almost there. He can meet with a Simi. And now they can be expecting their next child. So I think Asimi is ready to kick Miri right off the nest as soon as she can. Thankfully, Miri has another day on the nest because Von Ro was just born. And he is a brand new little baby, healthy across the board, which is really wonderful. Even though Asimi likes to say that her children are clearly more beautiful. And I have no idea how that makes Anis feel because she is definitely left out of that. She was not born with the dark, dark black fur that her brother and sister were. So poor little Anis, I have no idea how that makes her feel, but probably not too awesome. And we'll move her over one because she's going to possibly help us to collect up these nuts in just a little bit. And we'll have Miri gather up the nuts and the berries that she can reach. So this little family is quite contentious. They have a lot of fighting going on. And that may be one of the reasons that actually their son left. So Dukvan, who is the son of Ismi, the very first child that Ismi ever had, he is up here and he has found himself a new mate in Siko. So Siko and Dukvan have wonderful genetics to pair together because they're totally four completely different genes. I'm really hoping they'll have a lot of healthy wonderful children but to do that they need to find a new nest and Rokukir Roku here is actually trying to help them to find that nest. Rokukir is from this family which is a very loving family of nest sharers for the record. They share their nest no problem and actually uh, Anaala and Simeli are ex yeah Simela are pretty much best friends and they take care of each other's children they trust each other's children to one another without without hesitation and they haven't had any of the terrible issues with children being stolen from this nest that we had with their generation so they remember the lessons learned from their lost siblings and take very good care of their children together and their son, Rokukir, or I should say, like this group's son, Rokukir, is coming over and he is going to also try to be one of the potential mates of Siko. But we need to find a nest. So that's going to be our big goal today, is hopefully discovering another new nest somewhere up around this tree. 
I'm really hoping we'll stumble on it. Oh my goodness, and here comes the bird. You better stay away from my babies. I am watching you. All of our, like everybody, everybody heads up like little, like little prairie dogs or something. They see that this bird is floating up in the sky and they are not going to have any of that. So hopefully we'll be able to take care of our babies and the bird won't steal any of them. So let's get Seiko a little bit further in. I think she's just very, very eager to look around and see if she can potentially potentially find a good nest spot. And let's move Duke Vaughn. We'll have him explore that spot. Aha! It's a nest stealing bird! <gasps> I wonder if we follow it, if we might find something useful. Hmm. Let's go ahead. Let's examine where it's going. And we'll have to continue exploring with this group. That's one of our main goals for the day. All right, let's come on down. I don't think there's too much more we can do down here. Rira does want to help out. Um, she's very thick bodied. I forgot how powerful she was. So we'll send Rira out and I think we'll have her look around, maybe try to find, oh, oh man. Oh man, that makes you so nervous watching this guy float across the sky coming after our babies. That's very, very nerve wracking, but hopefully it'll be okay. We'll have Ana Ala. Uh, discover some of these areas and she can stay there. Rogue here is getting very old. Oh my goodness, I can't believe how old he's getting. Oh, uh, Samela, maybe we'll have him go ahead and breed. I think he can survive another turn or two without dying. So we'll have Samela breed with him next turn and get an, at least one last baby out of him that way. And then down here, this is the very small little group we have from the Cookie Family Tree family. And they are the direct descendants of Chocolate Chip. And you can see Lala, who has inherited the family heirloom, the uh, family recipe for chocolate chip cookies, is what we like to say. She is very happy, very slim right now. It's been quite a while since she hasn't been expecting, but that's going to change in just a second here. And Lala has stepped aside so that Mila can be her nest sharer and they can share the nest together. So we'll put Mila on the nest right now. So let's move little Rokduku. When did you get sick, little one? That won't do. You're perfectly fine. Oh, if only... Get away, bird. If only these would grow some new fruit. But I think those fruit are extremely rare. So you have to pick very, very carefully when you are going to use them. And we'll put Mila on top of the nest. And then I think we're going to go ahead... Here, Duke New. We'll have him shake this. And then we'll have him move over here and we'll have him keep moving. I think he'll stay here to watch over his son. I think he's a little worried about his child. So we'll have her come over and step over here so she can be at the nest with Mila. So she's probably going to be very, very sweet and help Mila through uh, this birth, but hope I think she's secretly hoping Mila will then get off of the nest and let her resume her duties. She was okay for taking a, a brief break, but she wants to have more children, especially because Isima, uh, Is, Ismiana, oh my goodness, the names are so fun, but Ismiana is her only heiress to the chocolate chip family right now. And wow, she's a dead ringer, more or Less, except for the fact that she doesn't have brown eyes and she doesn't have no paw instead she has berry paw which is fantastic but she is a very interesting direct descendant of chocolate chip and looks very 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 much like Meeks, her great great grandmother but i think that lala is a little worried and wants to see if she can have a sibling for uh for ismiana who sort of looks like her so we don't risk losing that genetic line and yes the fact that lycosis uh over here is actually another direct descendant of the chocolate chip family tree has not escaped me but it also hasn't escaped her attention that because she doesn't look like a chocolate chip like the fabled meese from the old island that she's pretty much been more or less passed over by a lot of her family so i think lycosis is going to start helping her father explore around the area using her really great ears and hopefully find some new berry bushes she may even come over and clear this area out so we can prepare it a nice little nest sight for oh look at the reflection of the bird in the water that's amazing but we may send her over here so she can prepare this little nest site for maybe future generations to be born there all right so how are we doing everybody seems okay we'll move little ducro over here and I think we'll put the elder female, Lassisi. Well, actually, this is Messi's first birth. So we'll let Messi go down and she can sit here. 
And then we have Kier Duke. He's finally old enough to be safe on his own. And he does have Venomous Fangs. So I think we might send Kier Duke down here and he'll finish clearing out the rest of this grass. And we'll have Isli Lala stay here and gather up from this berry bush. And then this family is doing okay now. And this family, Rilana, is finally old enough to help out with gathering the berries from the berry tree. So she'll stay here and help out with that. These guys are going to do some more exploring in just a moment. And over here, we have a fantastic victory tale of keeping the Dodo Mingo off of the nest. And finally, having Vankuro, Vankuro, a male, move into this group. So this is a pair of sisters who have been wanting to come over and establish their own little family ever since ever since Lariana was born. That's all she can remember. And Lariana finally has the opportunity to have a baby of her own. So we're gonna move little Rear over and we're gonna sit on the nest and we're gonna let Lariana finally have her baby. And over here, her sister is who she nest shares with. So Vancouver will go ahead and breed with her sister again. And I think we'll go ahead and eat all of the amazing food. We have predator meat and we have nuts that were on top of that tile. So a really solid meal for an expectant mother for sure. And then we'll come over and we'll just gather up what we can, shake the tree again. Oh, look at all those nuts. That's gonna be great. This branch of the family tree is probably gonna be very, very healthy. All right, so now we've sorted everybody out. We have several pregnant females on the nest. And let's go ahead and see what happens. And, all right, I hear the Dodo Mingo, the call of the Dodo Mingo in the distance. And we have a bunch of striped babies this time. That is very interesting. So over here with Nila, we now have Rovan, another Rovan, that's wonderful. And he's healthy across the board, except, so healthy two out of three except for the fact that he has blind eye uh, recessive. So we'll have to remember that. So he looks really wonderful and he's a good berry collector, not a very good fighter, but he is a good berry collector like his mother. So he can probably help out with all of the berry picking in a little bit. And then Lala is still here. Uh, we might go ahead and have her shake the, shake the tree, see if she can get any of the nuts that she really loves to eat. And then, oh, I think I missed a bunny because I got distracted by that little group, darn. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out for the bunnies. All right, and then we have another new baby right down here, another striped baby, Rokirta. And Rokirta is another very great berry collector. Not very strong though, so we'll have to remember that. I think what we're going to do, oh, we don't even have, oh, have we unlocked everything? We have now almost unlocked everything. We just need the secret unlock condition done. All right, then maybe we'll take big ears out and put in claw for now. Um. Maybe, maybe. We have a lot of great berry collectors, so let's try adding in some more fighters then. So we'll leave dots in, and I want to see Claw put in as well, and we'll see what happens. All right, so Rokirta. Yep, very good at collecting. Not a very good fighter, but that's okay. We have a pretty peaceful family for the most part. And Ducro can help gather up this berry down here. Here, Duke will go ahead and explore this area. We definitely want to search all of the grasses to make sure we don't run into predators. Uh, Ismiana will help out with gathering up these berries. And I guess Mila can move back over. We'll move her over next time. We'll let her sit with her baby under the nest today. And then Kier Dukenu, we'll go ahead and let him, I don't think Mila wants to become pregnant right away. So we'll go ahead and let him do a little exploring. And his daughter, Lakosis is actually doing quite a bit of exploring and pretty proud of herself for finding berries on her own in a little savanna tile, a little desert tiles. All right, let's see, how's this going? Isliana can gather up some berries there. Back here, Rilana can gather up this berry. We might move her over here so she can start collecting up those berries or even stand next to here and gather up both berries and nuts. That would be very, very useful. And then Samela here, we're gonna move Samela up and let her go ahead and breed with Rokir. I don't think Rokir has much longer for this world. So Samela is going to come and breed with him. And Anaala is going to gather up a berry for a snack and come and guard the little baby because they can really trust each other with their babies. Oh, Mila, you were old enough to move off the nest. Uh, oh, well, we'll move her off the nest next time and then allow Anaala to uh, move on and have her baby. So we are about to lose little Rokir here. I think he's very excited by the find that his son has done um, discovering this tree. We'll go ahead and let his son gather up a nut and just kind of clear this area out a little bit. 
And have we gotten everybody else out of the way? Rira would go ahead and start doing a bit of exploring on these tiles. Rira, you're not expecting, are you? Rira? Mm, are you expecting? Rira, how did you get pregnant? With whom did you get pregnant? Rira, did you run into... Rira was on her own. This is an unexpected pregnancy because she was completely on her own in these grasses. Did we have one of those males? I have been warned that there will be males that occasionally come through. And if you have an unattended female who does not have a baby yet or she's not pregnant, then they will get her pregnant. Is that what just happened here, Rira? Do you have something to say for yourself? I saw the grass rustling, but I, I thought it was just a bunny. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I do not think that we got Rira pregnant yet on purpose ourselves. So we're going to have to see what kind of baby she has. This is like a family, a family scandal or surprise, I should say. Oh my goodness, we'll have to see how that turns out. Oh, and we've got some bunny. There we go. Good job, Sokomi. Sokomi is very, I don't know why, she's just got such a beautiful name. It really, really appeals to me. All right, so we're going to have this exploratory little group go further in. <gasps> and we found the nest we were looking for, you guys. That is wonderful. So we have, oh, and there's two nest stealers, no less. Oh, Siko, go, 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 go. And Siko got on the nest. Yes, all right. So we've established another little family group up here. And we have to make sure that they're taken care of. I think Siko would be a little bit worried because she's surrounded by rustling grass and about to have a baby. But at least she is secure on the nest. Thank goodness. And speaking of being secure on the nest, I think that Miri is going to get kicked off the nest yet again by her jealous nest sister, her, <laughs> who she shares the nest with. We'll move her son Vanro over as well. And Isumi is going to sit down on the nest where she believes she totally belongs. And then we'll go ahead and have Rira help out with collecting up those pieces. And we'll send uh, Nuroku. He's still young. Now that he's been healed up, he kind of has a lot of uh, life left in him. So we'll send him over here to gather up these berries. And then he can maybe have another baby with Miri. If we can ever get Asimi off the nest long enough for Miri to like give birth. All right. Everybody's good over here. Yep. Everybody's good over here. Everybody's good over there. Wonderful. I am so curious, you guys. Oh, and there's a bunny. There's some good meals. Good dinner to eat. That's wonderful gather up what I can there and Messiana will have to wait until her sister her sister's not going to budge Larico has the E and T immunity genes though so that is a really great immunity combination over here this family like nobody shares the same immunity genes so this is wonderful we need to have tons of babies they will almost be like a genetic reserve that we will have over at this back corner to just pull out whenever we need them so we won't move them around too much because I know that she doesn't want to move. Lar Lariana needs to have as many babies as she can, but I know she wouldn't want to move and leave her baby unguarded. Um, even if there's not a bird in the area, though. If there's not a bird in the area? Hmm. Well, it wouldn't do us any good because she would have to get back on the nest anyway, so we'll just wait. All right, and does that cover about everything? I think it does. We're keeping pretty darn busy, and I think we'll move Isi uh, Islala over and she will now become the next creature to sit on top of this stump so she can help keep an eye out on everything. Over here we have Nudukro. He's beautiful but he doesn't have very good genetics whatsoever so he actually is just keeping watch over everyone for us. And let's come back up. We've got so much going on. Look at all of these nest stealers. <laughs> Talk about having to defend the nest, all right. There's so many Dodomingo over here. A very, very crowded nest indeed. And let's go ahead and see what Siko's child is going to be. And I hear a predator. And Siko has just given birth to Ikoko. It's Coco. Wow. And look at that. She has claw too. So she is going to be a good fighter. That's wonderful to see. We might start working on getting the bigger body in as well. I do think that having a stronger body... It would reduce our speed, but that would be okay if we could have a bit more strength. So let's bring in, hmm, and then we could keep our berry paw that way too. 
So that would add just one strength. Hmm, I think that's worth it. So we'll put in big body as the next thing we want to see mutated in. And now we have E and B immunity. Wonderful. So a good little family being built around here. We'll have to be very careful. I feel like Seiko is a little worried and wants to explore the area around here because she's somewhat concerned about the fact that there's so much noise and so much rustling in the bushes. And then I really want to get... Rira, I think everybody is surprised. They didn't expect Rira to become pregnant. So let's see if we can get Rira on the nest herself. And we're going to see what kind of baby Rira is going to have. Because I don't remember getting her pregnant. And I think that we may have had one of those unexpected males wander by. That's going to be kind of exciting to see. And little Rovan, I think he is a good berry picker. He is. Rovan can go ahead and move over here and we can start teaching him his half-sister. Ismiana, and we'll change her gems. There we go. So she is now ready to show that she is the descendant of chocolate chips, and she is going to be taking over the family line. We'll go ahead and have his half sister show him how to pick berries, and his mother will come over and probably do the same thing in just a moment. And Lala will step over here, back where she really likes to be. Her son is no longer sick, thank goodness, but he did take a little bit of damage. Her, her uh, eldest daughter, Lacosis is busy exploring. I hope she doesn't run into one of those unexpected males. That would definitely be a twist to the family tree for sure. And Kier Duke New is starting to get a little older. So let's actually move Mila up here and she will breed with him again. I don't think they're very active breeders though, unlike him and Lala. He and Lala are probably going to have as many babies as they possibly can before they get too old. And then over here, speaking of getting too old, it is Rokir's final days. So I think he's very proud of the family he has raised. He's going to have to pass the baton over to generation three and step back and allow them to take over the island. And Samela, I think is really going to miss him. We might have to bring in another male of some kind to hopefully help uh, take care of his, his little tribe. <laughs> they are not nearly old enough. They're not nearly old enough to be left without a male. They still have a lot of breeding years left in them, even if they're about to have grandchildren themselves. And speaking of grandchildren, Rokukir does want to come down and join this family. So we'll come over, have him give the tree a good shake, and he will come move in and help explore this area. And he and Duke Van, especially because Duke Van is injured and a little older, Duke Van might be relieved to see a younger male come in and keep his mate and child company. So add his genetics to the family, add his protection to the family as well. So I think that's what's gonna happen down here. And we'll let Roke here, I think as a final thing, move over here and do a little more exploring. And then he can pass away peacefully under the tree, surrounded by family and a dodomingo, who might as well be family because it gets in our way so often. And I think I had a pregnant female over here. I did, La Sisi is ready to have her child. So Rokirta, we'll go ahead and move him out of the way. And Messi will step over here and will breed her again because she has opposing immunity compared to Kuta. So they would actually be a really great pair to constantly have expecting and constantly have having babies. And I like to see how the family is forming a defensive formation around little Rokirta. So hopefully nothing will happen to him. And his adventurous brother, Kier Duke, is over here exploring and clearing away the grasses here. So hopefully we won't have any predators popping out unexpectedly. So that takes care of everything on this side of the family tree. Stay away, bird. Stay away. And we've moved over here now, and Rira is old enough to have a mate now. So I think next time we will be picking out a mate for Rira because I want to see what happens when we breed Rira up and we try to have black fur and violet eyes. I think that would be amazing. So Rira is quite proud. She has been fed lines over how wonderful she is and how fantastic she is from her mother, Asimi, her whole life. Asimi is actually old enough that I don't think we can breed her again. If she has I think about two turns left in her and so we don't have enough time to get her on a nest that would be empty so Mekomi is her last child and uh, not another one with black fur so I think Asimi kind of has pinned all of her hopes on her son and daughter primarily her daughter to take after her so Rira we will find her inmate next time and we will try to make sure that that mate uh, is one that hopefully will encourage the black fur and violet eyes to show up I think that would be amazing and me 
meanwhile, Miri is about to finally, finally, finally find herself able to actually use the nest the way she always has wanted to and have some babies of her own with Nuroku, who has no idea that there's been so much infighting between these two females for so long. So that's what's happening over here. And we'll see what we do with uh, Mikomi later. She's got two, so she's only got one out of three on the health level. Not sure if we'll breed her up, but we'll have to see. And then we're back over here with Lariana, who definitely wants to get pregnant again and be ready to have another baby. And Larico, we'll put Larico up on top of this bunny burrow. And Larico can keep an eye on the bunny burrow with Dad Vancuro. And Vancuro is going to give a good shake. There we go. A good shake to the tree. Knock down some nuts. And Rare can come down and help out with gathering those nuts up too. And Messiana, I think Messiana would want to do like, oh, never mind. She would just want to jump into the nest. I was going to say do a couple bits of exploring, but no, I think she wants to get back in the nest. Okay, we're about to have to have another battle. And with our genetic reserve family ugh, of all the groups to run into so many predators, maybe I should send up some of the, the spares that we have from this group up there. All right, so I think that lines everybody up. And now to finish off the day, you guys, let's see what the heck this mystery is. Rira, what kind of child are you going to have? Who's the father? I'm so confused. <gasps> sure enough. We have a twist in the family tree now, you guys. That means we had an unexpected male show up and get Lyra pregnant. And now we have got Spitsnout with a female little on the Lala. And the thing is, this family has never in all of their history seen a creature with, with the Spitsnout. And I don't know how they're going to take it. They're going to have to really think deeply about this. And this is going to be a very interesting twist. Uh, she has no paw secondary, blind eyes secondary, and immunity E at the very least. So Rira is our very first female who was unattended long enough that we had a male show up and add his genetics unexpectedly to the family tree. So we have a lot of other very exciting births that I can see along the edges over here. Oh my goodness, babies born all over the place that we are going to have to take a closer look at. A predator that we are going to have to deal with. <gasps> Beautiful oh, yellow eyes. I think having yellow eyes over here would be really exciting, actually. So interesting genetics popping up all over the place. New families being formed with the Dodo Mingo, if nothing else. And a lot more that we need to explore here on the Middle Island next time. So I will see you guys then. Bye-bye.